Hi, my name is Miss Christie. I'm a teaching artist with the PACE program. We integrate the arts with the classroom curriculum. We are coming to you today thanks to the Acadiana Center for the Arts and the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today, we will be talking about going to the beach. Have you ever been to the beach before? If you have, you know that it's usually when it's hot outside, it's sandy, and the water is cool and salty, and there's lots of activities to do at the beach. My son likes to play frisbee, my daughter likes to fly kites and eat ice cream, and I like to just sit in the sun. My husband, he likes to go fishing. How many of those activities do you like to do at the beach? So we're, we're also going to talk about why the, the waves crash on the shore and why there are high tides and low tides. The materials that you'll need for this project, you'll need a few sheets of paper. If you have construction paper, great. You'll start with a pencil and draw in the details and then we'll come back with crayons and color it. You're going to want to use the colors that you usually see at the beach. Every blue you can find, green, yellow, tan, peach, apricot, and light orange, even orange, any of those colors. Brown is another good color to have to create the sand. You'll also need a glue stick, scissors, for the scissors, we're going to be cutting out of our sand castle. You can always pause and catch up to where I am and then press play and keep going with the project. If you follow the directions closely, you're going to love the way your project comes out. Remember, their only mistake in art is to not make art at all. So if you make a mistake, it's okay. We can always fix it. I'll go over a couple of those little tricks to make it look the way you want it to. So remember, we're going to get started with a pencil and you're going to want to draw lightly so that when you color over it, the pencil marks won't show. A lot of artists start with a pencil to draw in the details before they apply the color. So no matter if you're using markers, crayons, or paint, you're going to want to have that drawing as a guide for you to fill in. So there have been a lot of artists over time that have created paintings of the beach. They wanted to show what kind of activities were going on at the time that they were visiting. You can see that over the centuries, people wear different things. They have different things on the beach with them. Some people are fishing. Some people are just laying in the sun. And it's only recently that we wear bathing suits. You can see in this painting by Winslow Homer that these women were wearing dresses and had umbrellas or parasols. A lot of paintings, you can see that there's no people in them at all. It's just how beautiful the beach is. For example, the painting that we're going to be working from today is by Georgia O'Keeffe. You can see that these colors are very soft. The sun looks like it's covered in a little bit of a haze, like there was a bit of clouds or something in the atmosphere and she used a lot of soft colors like sea green and blue green and whites and cream colors. So find those colors from your color box. We're going to be working with cool colors and warm colors. So I want you to think about what colors are on the beach and use those. So you're going to use every blue you have and try to use yellow, orange, tan, brown, and white for your beach. You're going to want to use blue, blue, green. Uh, you're going to want to mix white into it. If you don't have a sea green, you can always add white to your green. When you're coloring, try to color lightly at first. 
You want to build up layers of the crayon so that you you'll get beautiful colors. Like I said before, most artists start with a drawing. So let's get started. We're going to draw from left to right. I want you to find the top of your page and just point to it with your finger. We're going to draw the horizon line just a little ways down from the top. You watch me first and then you try. So this is far, far away as far as your eye can see in the ocean. And so these waves look really small and almost like they're barely there. So you're just going to carefully draw a line all the way across that barely has any waves at all. Then we're going to draw in the surf. So find the bottom left side of your page and trace your finger up just a little bit and this is going to be your beach. So now watch me first and then you try. These waves are going to look much bigger to our eyes. So we're going to draw them in very carefully and we're going to draw a wavy line just like this. Watch me first and then you try. I'm going to go very gently up and keep going and then down and then up and then down. So we'll only do about three waves on our shore. Now we're going to go back up to the horizon line and we're going to draw some more waves way, way far in the distance. So find your horizon line and trace it down just a little bit and we're going to draw another one of those lines that has the tiny little waves. Remember, you don't want to go too far up and down because these waves are actually so far away they're hard to see. So watch me first and then you try. Really, I'm just letting my hand naturally create the waves without trying too hard and it makes it a very subtle wavy line. Trace your finger down just a little bit more. I want you to try and put the distance that's here but a little bit bigger. Not much bigger. Watch me first and then you try. These waves are going to be just a little bit bigger There we go. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to be coloring over this. If you make a mistake anywhere in here, say your line goes down or goes too high, just remember, we're going to be coloring over it. And you can just correct your mistake and then color it in the way that you want it to be colored. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to go in between these two lines, kind of right in the middle. So the space between here and here is going to be a little bit bigger than here. So I'm going to go up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down and up and down. So that was four. If you can only fit three, that's okay. If you can only fit two down here, that's okay. It's, that is how the, the surf comes up on the beach. So now that we have our waves in, now we're going to put in a sun. I'm going to use the cap of my glue stick. I'm just going to put it right down on the paper. So I'm just going to trace around the cap of my glue stick. So that gives me a really nice circle. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some rings around that sun, just like Georgia O'Keeffe did. It shows that there's something in the atmosphere, moisture in the atmosphere. So I'm going to go ahead and just go around my sun. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to give you a guide for where you're going to color. Here, my circle kind of dips down a little bit. So I'm just going to correct that. I always tell my students, the only way to fail at art is to not do it at all. So let's make beautiful art today. 
You can decide if you want to do this kind of sun that Georgia O'Keeffe did, which it almost looks like a little bit of green, or you can do this one where she has a pink sun or a pink moon. It's up to you. You can make your sun bright yellow if you want to. And I think that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put some yellow in there. Now she also has a little bit of a pink ring that goes even further out. And I'm just going to use my crayon to color that in. So I'm just going to color some white around in here. And then she has a very golden sky. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of that as well. I'm going to make my sky golden. But if you want to make yours a blue or a turquoise blue, a sky blue, go right ahead. So just remember, I want you to color side to side. That's horizontal lines, side to side. Thinking of this as kind of a sunrise or a sunset. So I'm going to put a little bit of pink in my sky just a little bit at the bottom. All right, so let's start on the water. I'm going to use sea green and sky blue to start with. So in this Georgia O'Keeffe painting, you can see she has a lot of this sea green or turquoise green in her painting. And there's a whole band of it in the middle, and that's where I'm going to start. So watch me first, and then you try. So right here, just to get started, I'm going to mimic this line right here. That's, I'm tracing this pencil line that I drew. And now I'm going to trace over it, and this is where I'm going to start coloring. And it just gives me an idea of how big these waves are, just a little bit in the distance. And I remember, I want you to try to color side to side. That's going to be kind of like brush strokes, as if you were painting. So now I'm going to be using a blue-green above this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this line. And then I'm going to color in this whole area, go over the top of it with another color. For example, I did this sea green underneath. Now I'm going to go over the blue green with the sea green. So I'm going to use a pale blue. This one is sky blue. And I'm going to come up here to my horizon line and I'm going to draw in my horizon line with this pale blue. Side to side. You're trying to mimic how the water is flowing towards the shore. All right, I colored in this area. And now I'm going to go back over the top of it with a little bit of white just to see what happens. But it starts to blend those colors. It just makes them look more smooth. I'm going to use a little bit of a darker color called denim, and I'm just going to put a slight little line here, just a little bit. But then here, I'm going to do this, denim. So this whole area, I'm going to do some darker blues. And you don't have to do the whole section. I'm just going to do about half of it in this one blue, dark blue, and then the rest in a different dark blue. But I wanted to show you 
what that means to have a high tide and a low tide. I have here a diagram of what's happening to the whole planet Earth. When this happens, the water is moving because the moon has a gravitational pull. So the moon is actually pulling on the Earth and the Earth is strong enough to hold on to everything except the water. And the water is free moving and so it actually gets pulled by the moon. And that's why we have high tide and low tide. There's also waves that crash on the shore all day, every day, all night, every night. And that movement comes from the wind and from the, the pulling of the moon. So the wind is pushing the water and the waves are crashing over each other trying to get to the shore. All right, so you can see here that I filled in with that denim blue. And I have another dark blue called Blutiful. And I'm going to color a little bit of this at the top. And then I'm going to use just a regular blue underneath and you can see the difference. This is a primary blue. Have you ever heard of primary colors and secondary colors? If you have, then you know that blue is a primary color. There are three of them. Do you know what the other two primary colors are? If you said yellow and red, you're right. Yellow, red, and blue are the primary colors. Well, what about the secondary colors? What are they? There's three of them. Do you know what they are? If you said orange, green, and purple, you're right. But what makes them secondary and not primary colors? Well, primary colors are special because there's no colors that can be mixed to make those primary colors. But if you mix blue and yellow together, do you know what that makes? If you said green, you're right. That does make green. Now, if you mix yellow and red together, of course you get orange. And if you mix blue and red together, you get purple. So I have here a cerulean blue, and that is a kind of blue-green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this line, but I'm going to give it a little bit of a different shape. And I'm going to color some of it in. And I'm just following that line that I drew. Remember, we're going to layer these colors. All right, I'm going to come back with that light blue that I did up at the top. And I'm also going to go over this color that I just colored before. Okay. Now we're on the last part of our waves. That's right here by the beach. So let's see, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of that sea green. I'm going to put some in here. Thank you. 
And I'm going over this whole area with the sea green to really blend those three colors together. I've used this crayon so much I have to peel it a little bit. Okay, so once you get your waves colored, and remember you can pause at any time to catch up and then press play and we'll do the next part. So you see that I've been coloring my waves and I've just been going over and over and over with these colors light colors and dark colors. I have my sky blue again and I'm just going back over those dark blues just to fill them in a little bit and give them a little bit of softness and smoothness just as if I were using paint. I know it's hard to think of crayon as paint but once you start layering the wax of the crayon one on top of the other you're going to notice that it really blends and the best way to get it to blend is to start off soft. So let me show you how I do that with the beach. So I'm gonna use yellow first. And beaches really aren't yellow, but the warm yellow will give you that. So again, we're gonna be coloring from side to side. Just like I said, this is a horizontal surface. We're drawing a landscape so the land runs from side to side if we were doing a tree we would be going vertical up and down but we are doing a horizontal lines so we're going to be coloring side to side so you, you might be able to see that that's yellow i'm also going to use some peach or apricot and I'm just going to gently, very, very gently go over it side to side. Side to side, side to side. No chicken scratch is what I tell my kids and my students. All right. Now I'm going to come back over it with a little bit of orange, just a little bit. And the part that's closest to the water is where the sand is wet. So we're going to do that part a little bit darker and I'm going to use the color tan to do that. So right here on the water's edge, I'm just going to give it a little bit of tan to make it look as if the sand is wet right here. And then as you come down towards the bottom of the page, you want to get lighter and lighter with the tan. I'm even going to take a little bit of brown and do the same thing, just right here on the water's edge. Just enough to make it look like the sand is wet. And those, those waves wash up and go back and wash up and go back with the tide. And when they say it's high tide, that means that the water is way up high on the beach, maybe even close to the sidewalk. And then it washes way far down the beach and you end up with a much wider beach. And that's low tide. Good. All right, so we have those colors. And now we're going to draw in our sand castle. So go ahead and put your paint, your drawing aside. I'm going to take mine down. I'm 
and I'm going to put up another sheet of paper and I'm going to show you step by step how to draw a sand castle. So what shapes do you think of whenever you think of a sand castle? I have some pictures here to show you of sand castles that first you can see that these are pretty simple. You can tell that they were made with a bucket and that someone was filling that bucket with sand that was a little bit wet and packing it down really tight and then flipping it over and giving it a little tap and then pulling the bucket off of that sand and you can see that it creates the towers. So do you know what shapes those are? If you said a cylinder, you're right. Those are, that's the three-dimensional shape cylinder. You might also see that some of them are rectangular or prism shaped or cubed shaped. Some of them have what they call ramparts on top. These look like a family made them. And you can see that the sand around it is wet. In this picture, you can see that the water is all the way around the sandcastle. Do you know what happens when the water washes up over the sandcastle? Well, if you said that it washes away, you're right. So a sandcastle is art that is very temporary. That means it's not going to be around for very long. As soon as there's wind or rain or the tide coming in, or the high tide coming in, you, your sandcastle is going to wash away. Maybe that's part of the fun, is that it's just meant for a day. Now these sandcastles are really fancy. But we're going to be making our sandcastle out of paper. And we're going to create some basic shapes and then we're going to cut them out with scissors. So watch me first and then you try. So the first shape we're going to draw is a large square in the middle that we're going to call our main hall of the castle. So watch me first and then you do it. I'm going to go up and over and down. Now remember, you want this to be about as big as your hand. So this actually might be too big for my picture. So I might cut it down a little bit smaller. To draw the ramparts, watch me first and then you try. I'm going to go rectangle here, rectangle here, rectangle here, and a rectangle here. The next part we're going to draw is the big door. And I like to draw a big archway. Can you say that? Archway. If you want to draw in the crayon color that you used for the sand, you can. I'm going to draw in tan so that you can see it. So the door is actually going to be a darker color of your sand. So I'm going to draw it in tan, but then I'm going to use my brown to color it in. And it looks like the door is open and ready for people to come in for the celebration. So I started with yellow. Take your time. If you need to pause the video to catch up, go ahead. Now that we have the main hall of our castle, we're going to draw two towers on the side. I'm going to use my tan color instead of my pencil, and I'm going to draw those in. You watch me first, and then you try. I'm going to trace the side of my great hall, and then I'm going to go up just a little bit. Not too much, because I don't want to cover all of my picture. I'm going to come over and then down. So our castle towers are tall and skinny. Then I'm going to draw a triangle on top for the roof. 
I'm going to put one, two, three, four. So my towers have four stories. And you're going to color those in with your darker sand color. So I'm going to color in with my yellow. I'm also going to color in my windows with the brown. And this just makes the windows look like they're open windows. So for the other tower, it's the same thing. We're going to trace up the side of our great hall and go up just a little bit, go over, and then down. All right, I'm going to cut my castle out. Remember when you're cutting with your scissors, you want to keep your thumbs up, cut off those extra pieces that are in the way, and keep going. I want to show you how to cut out your rampart. If you want to try to do that without cutting out each one of them, cut straight across and continue on with the rest of your castle. And we'll do that last. I like to hold it upside down if I need to. The hardest part of cutting is holding that floppy piece of paper. part of the ramparts we need to cut out are the parts in the middle that you didn't color. So you're going to snip on each side of the white of the paper. Snip, 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 and I'm trying to get rid of my pencil marks. And then turn it to the side. And if you're left-handed, you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to be holding it with your right and cutting with your left. And you're going to get the scissors underneath that little piece and just snip it off. All right, and there's your ramparts. So I finished cutting out my castle. I'm going to go ahead and show you where I, I could put it here or I could put it here to frame the sun in the background. It's kind of up to you. You just want to try not to cover your sun with your tower. And if you feel like it's a little bit too big, you can cut the bottom off of it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just because I feel like it's a little bit too tall. So I just cut a little bit off the bottom and that made it a little bit shorter. Something I want you to also pay attention to is how much of your beach did you show? So before you glue it on, decide where you're going to put it and make sure there's enough beach underneath it to show. So I'm going to go ahead and use my glue stick. Put on plenty of glue. With glue sticks, the glue doesn't stick very good if you don't put on enough. If you have liquid glue, it's the opposite, where you're going to make a gigantic mess if you put on too much. But with glue sticks, it's much, much easier to control how much glue you're putting on. Yeah. So I'm going to put mine right here. And you can see that it's kind of close to the water, so it might get washed away. but it's a piece of artwork, so it'll last forever. What do you think? I wish I could see your sand castle. Thank you so much for making art with me today. We will be posting a new lesson every day at 10 a.m. on the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel. This will also be aired on the Acadiana Open Channel on TV. That's at Cox Channel 16 or LUS Channel 4. 
These lessons are for kindergarten, first grade, or second grade. But if you're an older sibling or even a grown-up like me that loves to do art projects, the only difference is that your skill level will be a little bit different. If you have a younger sibling that wants to do this project with you, help them out. Maybe they need help with cutting or they're not sure which colors to use. I encourage you to make art every day. And share your artwork. Spread the word. Tell everybody you know that you did an art project on, on the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel. Again, thank you so much for being with me today.